much fun this morning. I think that's kind of the usual in these parts of town. Yeah. Hey, ready for my close-up. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to the stew. It's your girl Anika. Hey. Hey. And it's Nay Nay. Oh, I'm Les. Les. AKA Storm. Hey. Hey. Just for the moment though, I'm going to switch Phoenix. it up. Storm! <laughs> awesome. All right. So let's just hop right into it. It is still silly season! Silly season. And it's still going to be that for a while. Oh, Cue, yes. Cue the music. <laughs> And I don't know if I could deal y'all. Jeez. I read yeah. this and I kid you not, I started itching from the inside. Mm -hmm. Do you know what it's like to itch from the inside? No. No. Sounds a little unhealthy, but um, yeah. I am kind of frustrated and over this whole back and forth. And the top of the news is that Loretta wants back in. Yes. Um, when does she want out? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I applaud her. I mean, when you go in, you go all the way in, right? No. Go in, go in hard, and or just go, home. go She's for finishing it. what she started, she so is. hats off to her. Yeah. I mean, I would, I don't know if I'd have that kind of courage and that kind of balls to really commit to something, especially after, you know, this process has been dragged out for so long. There's been so yeah. much slandering and name, so much pettiness going on. So, I mean, the kudos petty, to her for, for finishing what she started. At a high. Yes. Oof. Well, <clears throat> here's the thing, <laughs> <laughs> ladies. Um, yes. Obviously, some events have taken place within recent months that have not been the very best for her career. Mm -hmm. However, she is a politician. She has come this far. I can't see after working yourself up to this particular level, just walking away and saying, oh, you know, to hell with it. I'm not going to try mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, what as a country, as a society, do we expect her to do? Do we want her to just crawl in a hole and fade away into the distance? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or do we want her to actually try and divide, I'm sorry, try and include mm -hmm. um, all of the opposition members and uh, groups that are out there and try and you know unify them and bring them together, which is the reason why we're talking yeah. about well, this Well, let's now. remember, she's still the leader of the, op the official exactly. leader of the opposition. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not something that you can just step away mm -hmm. from. And I, I mean, she's been in the, she, uh, in the business, but in this realm for how many years? Pretty much her entire life, she grew up in this. Mm -hmm. So... You and I would never do that. We would yeah. never say, I've been working towards this point and now crawl under a rock, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. so. But you know what, ladies, also happening in silly season, we've got some name calling going on. <laughs> this is happening back and forth between Jerome Fitzgerald and Dr. Andre Rollins. Mm. Uh, recently, Andre Rollins referred to Jerome Fitzgerald as um, the devil. Um, had, <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh because I don't understand how our politicians, uh, you know, behave this way openly. Like, they ain't even shame. But you know, you know what, what I mean? It's like, not that unusual. I, 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 and it's yeah. sad that it is the usual. Yeah. Like, that's what truly it, makes it silly like season. It's kids on a playground, it's you know? True. And he even called the bumps on his nose, um, or at least he, he'd made mention of them. The <laughs> I mean, what's the purpose of all of this? horns are on his nose. That is correct. Crazy. And Jerome Fitzgerald, on the other hand, had said recently about Andre Rollins that he is a political prostitute and should be on Dowswell mm -hmm. Street. That is, yes, they it, said it. it's mental. But I mean, you have leaders of the free world talking mess like this all the time. I just don't understand. Educated people, yeah. did we not learn? I mean, did not they not learn at minimum conflict resolution? Let's try <laughs> to do this in a 
for I mean, they, they know, you know they want us to be politically correct all the time. We're on TV right now trying to be politically correct. You know, and these people talking about what, devil's yo? horns on people's noses? Come you on. You know what, though? Man. I'm going to be devil's advocate, Jeez. and I actually find it a little bit uh, humorous. A little bit entertaining, to say the very least. But do least. you want politics to be entertaining or, like, effective? Like, no, for me, I, I, and I'm sorry, I, I turn into such a prude when it comes to, to politics because I'm just like, can we just deal with the real issues? I don't want to hear you calling nobody no names. Like, can you treat me like an adult? Don't yeah, insult yeah, my sure. intelligence like that. You can't come to me and address the issues of the country you're on. You're doing a bunch of nanny exactly. on TV. Can you and say that? <gasps> at the end of the day, they want to keep they keeping <laughs> us dumb, dependent, distracted, D. D average. D average. There you go. Hey. So, there I mean, rise above. But in, like any, in any event, in all seriousness, there's a lot of stuff going on in our country today. Um, but there's a lot of uh, unbelievable stuff going on, too. One of which is the story with the three-year-old a few weeks ago that was left in a car. Um, the little boy did not make it. Um, but the teacher actually left the kid in the car. And the mother has now come out and said, I forgive her for what has happened. Yeah. A lot of parents maybe would not have taken that position. I don't think I would have because it's so, I mean, it's so traumatic. Yeah. Um, but, and at the end of the day, this she did something that required strength. Mm -hmm. um, and then thinking about all this name calling and back and forth, I mean, you actually have people that will, will, will stand on the side and say, you know what, outside of this, let's just focus on you know, this woman also has to live. She also feels bad. She's paying for the funeral expenses, um, bringing um, some people in for the funeral. So these are things that we really need to focus on. Yeah, it's it's forgiveness on a whole other level for, for sure. Because I know we had spoken about it on the show recently. Mm -hmm. And something like this, your child having passed away in such unfortunate mm -hmm. circumstances. Mm -hmm. Like you, I... I I couldn't even begin yeah. to imagine yeah. what that must be like, what that feels like, or if I could forgive. Yeah. So I truly applaud this mother oh, yeah. for her courage. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's big. Um, much like you've said, it breaks my heart to even read the news and to even talk about it. Um, <clears throat> so I can never in a million years imagine what that must feel like. But uh, prayers are out um, for that family, condolences. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I think it's a testament to all of us that Sometimes it may be difficult, but you can dig a little deep just to at least forgive so you can move on from mm -hmm. whatever is holding you hostage. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Ladies, it kind of brings up our next point. Uh, tips. What kind of tips would you give someone on having a very tough conversation? Ooh, well, that's tough. I mean, having tough conversations... It's not easy. It, you know, it, it's Honestly, pretty tough. I think of something like this, and I won't lie, the first thing that comes to my mind is just get them drunk. Yeah. <laughs> get them drunk. That way, Are you, you know, you could say us? whatever, whether they've heard you or not. No, but see, getting them drunk is <laughs> you tricky. You know, you said it. No, see, but then that's not having the <laughs> tough conversation. Remember, right? not, yeah, because they won't remember you. You're yeah, talking no, at them. you are having. Yeah. That's true. It's not really a conversation you know if they're just um, Funny enough, I had it. this situation <laughs> just last week um, and where... Uh, you know, my mother-in-law, we had a really tough conversation. You know, it, it was like a, my mother-in-law, my husband, we all had this, we were at dinner mm -hmm. and, you know, just taking it on, yeah. just taking it yeah, on. And I mean, we take life so seriously sometimes. And at the end of the day, you just got to be like, let me tell you something. You shouldn't have done that two years ago. And I'm sorry <laughs> that you felt that way. You know, it's yeah, just, it was yeah. just a matter of just, I mean, yes, wine was involved. Good food was involved. But it was that intimate setting, and you know, at the end of the day, just say it. Mm -hmm. say yeah, what you gotta and you know say. what? I have to add too. Um, I think as long as there's respect, right? Because difficult things are gonna be difficult. It don't yeah. matter how you pretty it up. It don't matter how you say. Well, you know, because when it doesn't matter how many times you you know dance around the bush, you're gonna have to talk about it. But I, what has worked for me time and time again is just respect. Yeah. As long as you're not throwing names, calling names, as long as you're not being disrespectful, using foul language, or attacking someone. Right, I right. think that even if someone doesn't agree with you, you can sleep soundly at night knowing that I told you how I felt with all due respect. And you know what I found too with tough conversations sometimes? You end up being surprised in a lot of the situations yeah. by the other person's reaction yeah. because you, you get to a point where you're like, oh, yeah. okay, this person is actually hearing yeah. me and they're understanding, again, respect, comes into yeah. play and you definitely need that. But speaking of respect, mm -hmm. uh, 
ladies, <laughs> when it comes to relationships, mm. right? Mm. How do you um, clearly define define if you're in a relationship or a situationship? A situationship is this a new word that came out less? <laughs> Please, <laughs> no, I don't think so. No. Actually, let me tell you, if you have to, I, I always say this: if you got to be second guessing and asking questions, you're probably in a situationship because someone who is yours is yours. It means that you have their time. It means that you have their attention, and it means that you have those things on but a full time, not a part time. I think it sounds quite fun. But hold on, though, <laughs> I think it sounds like a what really, a situation yeah. is though. If that's what you want, what is a situation? Well, that's the thing. Okay, depending on where you are in life, right? Mm -hmm. You... Uh, okay, so what about... <laughs> I'm just going to put it out there. What, a, what if you know you can do better? This person's a nice person. They definitely would have been the person you would have chosen if you didn't think that at the end of the day you could maybe find somebody else. I, I, I imagine that's the only reason why you would be in a situation right, right. So it's not like you can't be seen out with this person. It's like, like you may necessarily be tied to somebody else. But you guys can have a little fun. You can go out and do what you need to do. But really and truly, hmm. Ain't nothing happening. Can I get myself a, I know what y'all girls like these days, tall, dark, and a, you know, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, uh? Scrooby, I, I can't, I can't talk. I can't. I, what, what do you guys like these days? Say what your girls like these days. Tall, dark. You know what I mean. Um. So moving right along, <laughs> that to me sounds like a situation ship, and that does not sound half bad. That's all I'm saying. Oh, I always okay. say, you gotta do what works for you. You know honey, what, Les? Boo -boo you know what I have to say to you? Boots. Oh, take In my boots. My face. Our Oh, no, she didn't. Oh, no, she didn't. <laughs> so if you've been following social media lately, we've got a new boot bay in town. So forget Salt Bay. Forget Bay Bay in general. Is that why you're wearing boots today? Yes, girl. I am, represent I am representing for that girl sitting next to her man. And what you trying to... Where you going? Boot. Let me tell you. When I saw that video, <laughs> right? I thought to myself, what is this, this girl thinking? I'm not talking about the girlfriend, the one who is on the auction, right? The couple is together. They are clearly a couple. They are entwined with arms and legs on, you know, hands and, and laps and what have you. They are a couple. Regardless of whether you were going after the girl or the guy, they're a couple. How about, no, let's not touch them because yeah, they look yeah. like they're a little bit happy. No, but you know well, what? That they're telling you. Some girls would actually try. You'll actually try. But you know what about this girl? <gasps> not only did she fling her boot up, if you watch the, if you inspect the video with such close attention, Yes. She had her hand here. On the Kimba? Mm -hmm. And then she was just like... Don't do it, Bobo. Problem? Mm. Is this your block? Is yeah, this your corner? And that face, and face. then the face afterwards was like... Yeah. I love it. I love no, it. it Don't awkward. touch my man. <laughs> Don't touch my man. <laughs> yeah, so you heard that. <laughs> if you touch someone's man, you may or boot may not get face. the boot. So after the break, we're going to uh. switch gears and talk a little bit about... <laughs> real estate, your finances, and what you need to know if you want to get your first home. You don't want to miss it. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to The Stew. At the start of 2017, we promised you that we will help you to live a better and stronger life. That includes financial growth and real estate growth as well. Today, I am so pleased to welcome a dear friend of mine and real estate extraordinaire, Ryan Knowles, here to The Stew. Come on out, Ryan! <laughs> Welcome to the studio. You. Don't you Thank look you. dapper Good as per yes. usual? Yes. 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 a real real estate agent over here. <laughs> Listen, try, try, try. I'm happy you carved out time for us because you've been in New York, <laughs> you've been to Miami, you've been to Fashion Week, yes. you've been everywhere, but yes. most importantly, you've had a incredible 2016 with being the top seller, one of the top sellers at AG, HG Christie. Top I producer, yeah. Top producer, excuse wow. me. Yeah. Um, and then I know that you've been 
achieving so much more even at the beginning of 2017 but you know tell us a little more of what that was like for you uh, well you know I, I have a great uh, great career it's uh, it's not often that you can find something that you love to do mm -hmm. that actually pays you and so you know selling real estate meeting people showing homes um, helping people to achieve their goals is incredible for me oh, that's and awesome. the fact that I've been able to achieve as much as I have is it's a surprise in some ways and it's it's a blessing yeah and you're so young too so tell us about this like when did you realize real estate's my thing I'm gonna do this well, it's funny. I never expected to get into real estate. Um, I was actually working in a hotel, and I just happened to meet someone who was a real estate broker, mm -hmm. who we hit it off, and uh, you know, he basically asked me to work for him. Wow! And and, and that was that's how history. the rest is history. Yeah. All right, so let's <laughs> yeah. talk real estate. So okay. let's say I'm you know young, fresh out of school, but I'm thinking of owning some property or getting a home mm -hmm. or renting perhaps what what are some of the the key things that I would need to have keep in mind or do in order to achieve any of those so uh, one of the biggest things is saving right mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people unfortunately the Bahamas don't save yeah and if you want to buy a home or even rent a home you, <laughs> you need to kind of have some savings built yeah. up that's the first thing and the second thing would be to talk to a professional Okay. Uh, whether that's a realtor or a banker, mm -hmm. you know, find out what you need to qualify, what the steps are, you know, what the legal process is, uh, because you've got to be ready for that before you decide to go and buy something mm -hmm. or rent something. Well, getting down into the nitty gritty of it all, mm -hmm. that's I like to call it, because after going through the process, there's a lot of hidden things that they don't actually tell you. Yes. So that's true. Give us. That is very I mean, true. you know, because we want our we want our audience, of course, to know. What's re what it really is. Tell us some of the kind of fees or the expenses that pop up on you that you really need to start thinking about when sure. saving. Sure, 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 yeah. So if you're looking at buying a home, you probably want to have about 15% of the purchase price saved. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if the home's valued at, let's say, you know, 200000 you want to have uh, $30,000 saved. Okay. And that's going to cover your stamp duty your legal fees, your bank fees, uh, mortgage application fees, all those things come into play. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's, it would roughly represent about 15%. I would say safely 15%, yeah. Um, but yeah. then there's also this idea of not, you have to work at a certain place for a certain time or have been making a certain amount at a certain time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to be, most banks want you to be at your current job for three years before they will give you a mortgage. Wow. wow. Yeah. Yeah, and what about years. the age thing? Because I would imagine it's even harder to qualify the older you are because then it's, it takes you a longer time to pay for mortgage. What's that about? Well, yeah, we don't have that issue because we're all young. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, if you're, you know, 70 years old, they're not going to probably give you. Wow. So you got to start thinking about that stuff now. Yeah, Earlier. yeah, yeah definitely. Wow. Most mortgages are 20 years right. at least. So, you know, by the time you're 40, if you haven't gotten one, it's going to be tough. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. What about rentals um, in terms of house, in terms of property? Is rental still a good investment? It depends on, on the person's you know, personal situation. Mm. Uh, I tend to try to dissuade people from renting if they can. Right. Just because, you know, you really not, at the end of the day, you've rented for 10 years and you don't have much to show for it yeah. necessarily. Now everyone has their own situation. Maybe you know you have to rent because mm -hmm. of where you are, mm -hmm. but if you could avoid it, I would say try to. Right. Yeah. I'm kind of staring away a little bit. Um, Airbnb has blown up in the last couple of years, yes. I guess, yeah. and um, this idea of an investment property mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as a rental mm -hmm. has come into play. What are your thoughts on that? I think it's beautiful. I think it's a great thing. Um, Short-term rentals are on fire right now. Mm -hmm. okay. And, uh, you know, the Bahamas is known for tourism, so a lot of the demand comes from tourists mm -hmm. who want to come here, stay, and not stay in a hotel, but stay in a home where they can cook and, you know, have family time and have privacy. So I think it's, it's great. The okay. returns on short-term rental properties are uh, amazing. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Now, we know the real estate part, but we know Ryan knows best, the blog, and yeah. the white party <laughs> people, if you haven't, <laughs> you know, been so graced to attend one. Right. Um, so is the white party coming back in 2017? And, it, like, you know, give is. us a little scoop. It is. Uh, I can't say much, but it's, it's actually going to be a white party weekend. Oh, fancy. Okay. It's going to be a whole weekend this year. <laughs> Let me tell you, the last one was pretty incredible. I, I yeah. think I behaved fairly, fairly I think well. So. I yeah. think so. So tell us about the blog as well and what, what started Ryan Knowles Best. 
Uh, I've always enjoyed writing. I've mm -hmm. always liked writing from when I was a kid in school. Mm -hmm. uh, so Ryan Knowles Best is just a way for me to write and get my thoughts out there. And mm -hmm. you know, if someone reads it, it's great. If not, it's great too. <laughs> I don't mind. You yeah. know, yeah. it's just kind of a fun thing for me to do. And mm -hmm. people have really appreciated it. I've gotten a lot of comments. Uh, people seem to enjoy oh. it. Yeah. What do you yeah. um, focus on when you write, and what's next? Or Ryan Knowles Best? Ryan Knowles Best. It's a great question. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. Just taking it in stride, huh? Yeah, I write about travel, you know, mm -hmm. books I read, uh, some real estate stuff, but not too much. Right. You know, it's more about me and my personal life. Yeah. Well, yeah. people love that, you know, you share, and that's what it's all about in this day and age, sharing with everyone what it is that you're doing, what's inspiring mm -hmm. you, what mm -hmm. gets you going. Exactly. So Keep it up. Thank what you, about young you. people? I have to ask you, Ryan, <laughs> for you. the high schoolers that you know may think all I have to do is come out of school, get a nine to five. But you've taken kind of an untraditional route and you've achieved great success. What's the advice you're going to give to those high schoolers? Ooh, that's a tough one. <laughs> uh, whenever people ask me that, because I don't have the formula, right? right I, I feel yeah. like in a lot of ways I'm lucky. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got to work hard. Mm -hmm. yeah. You've got to find something that you actually like to do. Mm -hmm. And I think a big thing is find a mentor, if you can. Yes. Yeah. You know, find somebody yes. who can guide you. Yeah. Um, because I had that in my case, and it was a huge, huge uh, advantage that I had. Right. That's amazing. Yeah. Yay! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for being here. We're looking You're out welcome. for our invite for the white party. Just okay. saying. Okay. Like, okay. Sure. You I would totally stop being friends with you <laughs> if I did not receive an invite. Thank you a million more times for joining us You're today. You're very welcome. Thanks Guys, for having me. remember, you got to start saving from now if you want to buy this house or this investment property. Thank you so much. We'll see you on the next side of the break. <laughs>
This has been your Fat Frugal Tip of the Week, part two on entrepreneurship. It's 2017. It's time for you to take a stand. We'll be back after the break. Thank you so much for starting your week off with us once again here on The Stew. Be sure to catch up on all of the episodes that you have missed. The Stew Daytime on Facebook. Thank you very much, Ryan Knowles, for stopping by and sharing your real estate knowledge and expertise with us. We've always appreciate Janae and her fab frugal tips. And ladies and gentlemen, if you find yourself in a situation ship, be careful. You just might get a boot in your face. Ooh, nice one, Les. Mm -hmm. Nice I'm one. I'm just saying, be careful. But if, if you're the one that started it. <laughs> oh, okay, according to Janae. <laughs> Tell them Janae said it was okay. <laughs> we'll see, see you, you next later. time right here on This Stew. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah.